Now, one in 20 people in the UK will suffer from a rare disease in their lifetime, and there is thought to be around 6,000 rare diseases worldwide. Tragically, there is no cure for the majority of rare diseases, and many go undiagnosed. Here to talk to us more about this is Beverly Power. She's Secretary and Trustee for CDH UK. Welcome, Beverly, to BFBS. Thank you, Nikki. Now, um, we, first of all, let's get the, the three-letter abbreviations out the way, although saying that, the military love a three-letter abbreviation. What <laughs> is CDH? CDH is the abbreviation for a birth anomaly called congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Okay, and what does that actually mean? Okay, so um, we have a what's called a diaphragm, which is a, a thin muscle sheet um, which separates our chest cavity from our abdominal cavities and it's also instrumental in breathing and straining. Um, so for example, when we go to the toilet, um, the diaphragm comes into effect. So um, in a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the, the, the diaphragm forms in, in a baby that's grown in the womb at around about 10 to 11 weeks of gestation. And for reasons that we don't yet know, um, in CDH, the diaphragm fails to form correctly. Um, and basically it leaves a hole in the diaphragm and that can allow the contents. One in 20 people in the UK will suffer from a rare disease in their lifetime and there's thought to be around 6,000 rare diseases worldwide. Tragically, there's no cure for the majority of these diseases and many go undiagnosed. Sadly, 75% of these conditions affect children and one such rare disease affecting children is congenital diaphragmatic hernia, otherwise known as CDH. On the line with me now to tell us more is Beverly Power, Secretary and Trustee for CDH UK. Hello, Beverly. Good morning, Steve. Please tell us, uh, what is CDH exactly? Well, CDH is the abbreviation for congenital diaphragmatic hernia, which is classed as a birth defect or birth anomaly. Um, and it rarely occurs when the diaphragm fails to form in the uh, baby growing inside the womb. Um, the diaphragm develops at roughly around about 10 to 11 weeks of a baby's gestation and for some reason that we don't know yet, um, the diaphragm fails to form correctly and that results in a, a hole, a defect in the diaphragm and what this does, it allows the contents that are contained below the diaphragm which are things like the bowel, um, the liver. It's about 38 minutes past 11. I've got a very special guest joining me now. We've got Beverly Power, who's the Secretary and Trustee for CDH UK. Hi, Beverly. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Tell us a little bit about what CDH is, because I hadn't even heard about it until this week. Well, very sadly, you're not alone. Um, you know, um, most is a case that um, anybody diagnosed during pregnancy sadly hasn't heard of the condition either. So CDH is the abbreviated name for a birth anomaly called congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And as the name suggests, it affects the diaphragm. Our diaphragm is a, a thin muscle sheet that helps us to breathe. It helps us to strain, to go to the toilet, to stand up, to sit down. Mm. So it's a very functioning muscle. Um, and what happens with CDH is around about the 11 weeks of a baby growing in the womb, for some reason that we don't know um, yet, um, the diaphragm um, doesn't form correctly. And that um, creates a hole in the diaphragm and the contents that are contained in the abdominal cavity, they rise up through the hole into the chest cavity. And what that does is it prevents the lungs from growing, it can push the heart over, affect the uh, windpipe, the food pipe, and it can create a, um, a host of problems um, for the baby once it's born. Whilst ever it's in the womb, uh, mummy's you know, feeding and breathing for the baby so it's not too much of a trouble but the problems start when the baby is born mm. and these babies are extremely sick uh, some of the sickest um, in an intensive care unit setting they require multidisciplinary team um, when the baby's born um, so it's very much a medical emergency and very much a time of uncertainty for the medical team and the parents um, devastating condition mm. 
Wow, oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. And actually, you don't sort of hear about um, that when you go for any of your antenatal or prenatal sort of um, appointments, do you? Is that something that we should be more aware of, though? Well, we think so as a charity, yes. Um, we've all heard of conditions, for example, uh, cystic fibrosis and spina bifida. And in fact, CDH is roughly around uh, the same occurrence as, as these other more well-known conditions. Oh. Um, it it's said to occur in around about one in two and a half thousand live births. But in fact, um, CDH UK believes that it's probably a, a higher number than that. Um, and this is why we feel, um, you know, that research is so important. Mm, definitely. I mean, you know, it's good to be aware of things like that. Tell us, please, how you became involved and interested uh, in CDH yourself. Okay, well, um, my daughter fell pregnant uh, with my first grandson and at her 20-week scan, it was found very sadly that Finlay had um, a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, very sadly, Finlay died at eight days old. He didn't survive. He was sadly one of the 50% um, that tragically don't survive this condition. Um, and from that, I tried to um, find some help for Lauren, some peer support uh, when she was first diagnosed and I actually struggled to find any help. I eventually came across a very small charity um, that was run by uh, Brenda and Kevin Lane, who are based in Kings Lane um, in Norfolk. And um, I eventually found them. And what I found once I'd, I'd got the help for Lauren is that with my background... Um, is, it, is it usually discovered then at the time of birth or beforehand? Um, well, around about 60% are diagnosed at the 20-week fetal anomaly scan, which is, is why um, mums have these scans to pick up on, oh. on anomalies. Uh, but some of them can be detected as early as, as 12 weeks at the dating scan. Um, the rest of them um, can be picked up later in pregnancy. Some of them um, when the baby's first born or within a few days of birth and, and a bit more rarely um, even into adulthood. And also, you know, if that happens to you that you don't blame yourself for something that you've done in the pregnancy? Well, absolutely. I mean, CDH, um, we don't know what causes it, but it's certainly not something mom's done. You know, it's not one single thing. Um, we believe it's possibly multifactorial, which basically means that it could be um, something um, genetically linked it could be something environmentally linked and by that we don't always mean um, you know it's something you eat or breathe in it could just be um, a socio-economic um, factor either um, you know so people may be from a poorer class um, you know so, so we think it's multifactorial but we we actually just don't know mm, mm. can it be treated Yes, um, it can be treated um, in in respect of, you know, once the baby's born and, um, you know, the baby can be stabilised uh, by the doctors. Um, if the baby gets to a point where all of the readings, the vital statistics are how the doctors want them to be, you know, they're sitting in a stable condition, then the doctors can carry out a repair to the diaphragm, um, which involves putting all of the organs back where they should be, um, and then either stitching up the hole, if it's a small hole, or applying a patch, um, if it's um, a larger defect. Um, and then the baby can spend anything from a few weeks to months um, in a hospital setting recovering you know help with things like feeding um, you know developing any sort of complications that have arisen from from the, the diaphragmatic hernia um, usually the earlier that this is picked up and detected mm. the the worse the outcome is for the baby because um, the more the lungs have been compromised you know the lungs are very very mm. tiny very hyperplastic as, as a medical term is, mm. is for this. I would imagine the research is extremely important. What's going on with the research at the moment? Yeah, um, research is, is a key thing to 
preventing congenital diaphragmatic hernia um, and the charity a few years ago set up its own research fund because we don't get any input from any government funding. Um, children's medical research in particular is grossly underfunded in the UK at the moment um, and rare diseases even more so so you can understand the predicament that we have as a charity not obtaining any grants or any funding from anywhere. So setting up our own research fund was paramount really. Um, we got everybody behind our campaign and we managed to actually um, raise half a million pounds within quite a short space of time and we very recently in fact in 2017 um, donated um, just about the whole half a million to five very exciting research projects. Has there been enough research into it or is, is sort of the research and everything still going on? Um, well, in the past, there hasn't been that much research into uh, CDH, um, which is where we stepped in really as a charity and decided, um, you know, we couldn't get any funding from the government really. We couldn't get any funding from grants, you know, such as lottery grants and things mm. like this. Um, you know, we find that there's very um, little you can get hold of for children's medical research and even less for rare disease research. So we set up our own research fund we managed to um, raise half a million pounds wow. um, and in 2017 we do, we donated that money to what we believe to be um, very um, exciting research projects five of them um, in total um, it's very early days for the research projects so we don't have any updates to be able to to tell you about here and now um, but they are different areas so we have um, looking into the cause, um, looking into prevention and looking into improving outcomes um, for CDH mm. patients and survival rates. Um, there's lots of places you can go and you've mentioned already some places I, I just want to uh, sort of make our listeners aware of the CDH Awareness Day that you've got on the 28th of June which is obviously your charity yes. uh, specifically and um, if there is anywhere else that people can go to for uh, more details uh, where, where would they head to? Well, a good stop would be um, to head over to our website at www.cdhuk.org.uk. Um, you can also support our charity by making donations, joining in with awareness campaigns uh, during June and specifically on Awareness Day on June the 28th. You can also find us on all of these social media platforms, you know, your Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. Um, so, yeah, head on over and find more, you know, more information and, and how you can help. Fantastic. Well, I hope that today obviously makes people more aware of Rare Disease Day. And thank you so much for talking to us, Beverly Power, Secretary and Trustee for CDH UK. And uh, I believe we've got a CDH Awareness Day coming up in June. So do you lo have lots of things leading up to that day? We do. We usually use the whole of June, really, too, because one day is very difficult to get yeah. everybody <laughs> doing something on one day. So we tend to kind of have June as CDH Awareness Month, and it all sort of um, accumulates in the 28th of June. Uh, for example, last year... Um, we got people um, joining in with things on social media. Um, we had a skydive, a, a, a record-breaking skydive attempt, which very sadly had the dampers put on it by uh, our wonderful British weather. Oh, slight today. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, slight today. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got lots of exciting things coming up for June, um, which we um, will be telling all of our supporters about in, in the coming weeks. Um, and they can find out more about that um, by visiting our Facebook page and website. What's the, what's the Facebook page and website? Um, so the Facebook page um, is easy to find. It's CDH UK. Um, we, we're also on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and the website is www.cdhuk.org.uk.